Welcome to section 10 of Bacteria. In this section, we'll be discussing Streptococcus pneumoniae, which you can see on our overview figure right here. This scene takes place in the autumn season, and the characters you'll see here are shown harvesting the crops and cleaning up the mess. So it's kind of like a fall harvest scene. The lawnmower in this scene was just purchased in order to make the fall harvest and cleanup easier. New mower sounds like pneumonia, so the new mower represents Streptococcus pneumoniae. You see the news tag on this brand new mower? This is to help you remember that it's a new mower. So new mower, strep pneumonia. Notice anything else about the mower? That's right, it's an incredibly ugly purple color. This is to help you remember that strep pneumonia is a gram positive organism. So just like in other videos, the purple represents gram positive. This is a gram stain of streptococci. First off, notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram positive organism. And second, notice that the bacteria are circular or cocci shaped and that they form long, continuous chains. So the morphology we see here is unique to streptococci. Now we've added some alfalfa to the scene. This is to help you remember that streptococcus pneumoniae is alpha hemolytic. So alfalfa for alpha hemolytic. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we discussed in more detail in section seven, which is our video on listeria. Again, alpha hemolysis looks like this. Notice the green appearing zone of partial hemolysis surrounding the colony. Okay, let's return to the image. Notice that now we've added this silly looking chin hero guy who's riding the mower. He's a bit sensitive about his chin, so throughout his life, he's had to overcompensate for this by exercising, as you can tell by his humongous muscles. The fact that he has a massive looking chin and is sensitive about it should help you remember that strep pneumonia is optotion sensitive. So sensitive chin man for optotion sensitive. We discussed this figure in section nine, which is our video on the Viridens group streptococci, but recall that if there is clearing around a disc saturated with optotion, then the organism is optotion sensitive. Notice that there is a large zone of clearing directly adjacent to this disc. So if this were an optotion disc, then the organism here would be optotion sensitive. For step one, you need to know that streptococcus pneumoniae is optotion sensitive. Next, notice that we've added some interesting looking lances and tridents on the mower. This is why the Optotion man purchased the new mower in the first place. He needed some sharp new blades to help him with the fall harvest. It appears that these gadgets are working well at cutting down the alfalfa. Let's talk about the lances first. The lances on the back of the mower have been included in this image to help you remember that Streptococcus pneumoniae has a lancet-shaped diplococci appearance under the microscope. So lances for lancet-shaped. The tridents seen on the front of the mower are our symbol for the drug ceftriaxone. The word ceftriaxone has the sound tri in it, so a trident seems fitting. Likewise, it has the word ax in it, so we'll be using tridents and axes to represent ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone is one of the drugs commonly used to treat streptococcus pneumoniae. We've also added the scarecrow in the field, which appears to be doing a poor job scaring away the birds. The scarecrow is our symbol for macrolides. Crow sounds like macro, so a scarecrow seems fitting for this class of drugs. Just like ceftriaxone, macrolides are also commonly used to treat streptococcus pneumoniae. So in summary, the treatment for strep pneumonia is a macrolide in combination with ceftriaxone. As I mentioned a second ago, the scarecrow is doing a poor job at scaring away birds, as you can tell by the quails sitting on his arm. These quails were included in the image to help you remember the quelling reaction. This is a reaction in which antibodies bind to the capsule of streptococcus pneumoniae, and it can be helpful in serotyping the capsule. Over 90 strains of strep pneumonia have been discovered, and they're distinguished based on differences in the polysaccharide capsule. Therefore, this reaction can provide useful information about the capsule. So again, quails for quelling reaction. This is an image of the quelling reaction. When anti-capsular antibodies and methylene blue dye are used to stain the capsule, it swells and appears as a blue halo, as you can see in the image right here. Speaking of a polysaccharide capsule, look at these sacks of apples we just added to the back of the scene. In our images, a sack is our symbol for a polysaccharide capsule. Sac sounds like polysaccharide, so these sacs back here should help you remember that strep pneumonia has a polysaccharide capsule. All of the apples are back here because they've been harvested to make apple juice. The big container next to the sac is full of apples, which is about to be made into some delicious juice. We've also added a syringe on the sac to help you remember that the vaccine against strep pneumonia is directed against the polysaccharide capsule. We've used syringes in other videos as our symbol for vaccination, and we'll continue to use this throughout our image mnemonic videos. In the United States, there are two pneumococcal vaccines, including the 23 serotype vaccine and the 13 serotype vaccine. These vaccines are used to prevent disease in children, individuals who may be immunocompromised, and adults who are 65 years and older. So syringe on the sac, 
for vaccine is directed against the polysaccharide capsule. Unfortunately, some of the apple juice has spilled on the ground. It's a tragedy, so sad. If you're weird like my co-founder Rhett and you happen to hate apples, then maybe you're feeling a bit relieved right now. Anyways, the spilled green juice on the ground here is our symbol for bile. If you look closely, you can see ice cubes that have melted in the center of the spill. The melted ice cubes inside of the green juice is our symbol for bile soluble. This makes sense, right? The ice cubes are melting or are soluble within the apple juice. So for step one, you need to know that strep pneumonia is bile soluble. We covered this test in more detail in section nine, so we're not going to discuss it again. This guy back here saw the mess, so he grabbed a mop and started cleaning it up. Mops is a popular mnemonic that is used to remember that strep pneumonia is the most common cause of meningitis in adults of all ages, otitis media in children, community acquired pneumonia, and sinusitis in adults. So mop for the mops mnemonic. This is an otoscopic image of acute otitis media. Notice that the tympanic membrane is bulging out towards us and appears red. This is a classic physical exam finding of otitis media. We've also included this guy towards the front of the image who's helping cut down the vegetation here. Notice that he's using a sickle. This seems pretty fitting with the story considering that this is a fall harvest scene, right? The sickle here is to help you remember that strep pneumonia can cause sepsis in patients with sickle cell disease. This is because sickle cell patients are prone to becoming a splenic, and the spleen normally helps clear encapsulated organisms. Therefore, an asplenic patient is at an increased risk of developing severe infections from encapsulated organisms such as strep pneumonia. So sickle for sepsis in sickle cell disease and asplenic patients. Finally, notice that this guy is holding up a big pair of scissors, kind of like yard clippers. Scissors are our symbol for proteases, and this should be fairly intuitive. Proteases are enzymes that cleave proteins just like scissors cleave paper. Therefore, the yard clippers in this image are here to help you remember that strep pneumonia produces an IgA protease. This is a virulence factor that cleaves IgA and allows the organism to evade the host immune response and colonize the mucous membranes. So scissors for IgA protease. Okay, let's wrap up this section with a question. A 67-year-old female presents to the emergency department due to sudden onset nausea, vomiting, and confusion. Physical examination is significant for a fever of 38.6, nuchal rigidity, and altered mental status. Empiric treatment is started and a lumbar puncture is performed. CSF gram stain reveals gram-positive lancet-shaped diplococci. Administration of a vaccine directed against what bacterial structure may have been helpful in preventing infection. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has developed meningitis. Common clinical features of meningitis include a fever, nuchal rigidity, and altered mental status. Strep pneumonia is the most common cause of bacterial meningitis in adults, so this should immediately be at the top of your differential without any other information. However, the question stem further states that a CSF gram stain reveals gram-positive, lancet-shaped diplococci. Therefore, we can be confident that the microorganism being described in the question stem is strep pneumonia. With this in mind, we're asked what bacterial structure the vaccine targets. So the answer is the polysaccharide capsule. From the image, recall that the sac back here with the syringe on it is to help you remember that the vaccine is directed against the polysaccharide capsule. And with that, we've concluded our video on strep pneumonia.